Well, when I started, it was on the 28th of January. So I knew that I had to put a lot of time in and effort. But when I got, I, when I first got on the Zoom call with you, I thought that maybe I could do, you know, seven hours, 10 hours. But then when you told me that, no, you need to dedicate like a lot of time because to get through the modules, just to watch the videos was going to take a lot of time. So you were like, oh no, it's going to have to be like 30 hours. Like when you set that bar for me, it was like, I was like, oh, this is a lot more serious than I thought initially, especially if I wanted to do it in a month. Hi, Justin. Hey, what's going on, Wasim? Very much. Uh, congratulations on passing the exam and first attempt, man. Today is Wednesday, uh, and really you. great to hear. Really hear, get to uh, great to hear about the results. Uh, how, how are you feeling? Man, I was a little bit afraid when I first went into the test. It was like in the first part, I felt completely confident. Like I was destroying it. All the questions, nothing was new. Everything was very easy. But then in the second portion, it was like started getting tough because it was a lot of computer stuff. And since I'm an electrical engineering major, it was sort of like not what I was used to. So it was a little bit tougher in the second part. Mm -hmm. But I just got my results back today and then I passed. So I was really psyched about that. <laughs> yeah, that's all that's all that matters, right? So yeah. uh, a couple of interesting things about your exam preparation. And I know I have like I have a lot of students who are preparing for the FE electrical or P power at any given time. But mm -hmm. I remember that when you signed up for my course, you just signed up for a month. And uh, you sent me an email, uh, I believe just two weeks into the course that, hey, Vaseem, I'm, I'm scheduled to take the exam on this date, which was actually the 24th weeks. of February. Yeah, 24th of February. So less than, you got it done in less than a month. That's the point, right? So you definitely yeah. have an advantage that you are a recent graduate. I think you're still just in the process of finishing up your school, right? And, uh, but even then, like getting this thing done in less than a month is a great achievement. So mm -hmm. after I received that email from you, I'm like, you know what, Justin, if you really want to make it happen in a month, let's hop on a Zoom call and let's see what where you are at in terms of your preparation and what needs to be done. Uh, initially, I was probably going to recommend you to push it out a little bit, uh, but the way that you approached your exam preparation, uh, oh. that, was, that was really impressive. So walk me through like how you made it happen in a month. Well, when I started, it was on the 28th of January. So I knew that I had to put a lot of time in and effort, but when I got, I, when I first got on the Zoom call with you, I thought that maybe I could do, you know, seven hours, 10 hours, you know, dedicated to studying, whatever, because I, I get things pretty quickly. But then when you told me that, no, you need to dedicate like a lot of time because to get through the modules, just to watch the videos was going to take a lot of time. So you were like, oh no, it's going to have to be like 30 hours. Like when you set that bar for me, it was like, I was like, oh, this is a lot more serious than I thought initially, especially if I wanted to do it in a month. So just your Zoom call really helped me kind of gear my, like my mindset, as well as kind of like setting a pace for myself so that I could like, I, I would sit down and I would literally grab my phone and I would set a timer every time I sat down to start studying. And until I reached like 30 to 35 hours in that week, I wouldn't stop. Like I would just like, you know, I would try to hit that milestone each and every time. And that's how I got through the module so quickly. And I was just, you know, practicing questions and doing things. That's sort of how I kept pace with everything. And without your Zoom call, I wouldn't have had that mindset going in. I would have treated it kind of like lackadaisical. But because of the, the time crunch I wanted to get it done in, I, we really needed to get it done. And then I'll, I was also cool. It was cool that you even were saying like around this time when you're 80% done with the modules, give me another call back. And we touched base again. You refreshed my mind about like, okay, we still need to get things done. Like you saw where I was at with the practice exam and everything. And then you were like, okay, you still need to put in at least another 30 or, or so hours before the test. Cause I was already thinking I was done at that point. Like yeah. I was like, okay, I'm pretty much know what I know, but given the time frame, you said, okay, we need to put in this much more time before the test. And then I called you one more time, I think before, like maybe two days out from the test. And you yeah. even gave me a rundown of like how to prepare. Like when I went to the test, I, I did everything you said, literally like to the T, like you were saying um, to go to sleep. Don't really try to review anything before the test, because then I'd be psyching myself out, like just know what you know. And then when I went there, I didn't really, I ate a good breakfast in the morning. I didn't drink coffee. 
I went into I, the I, I remember you asking yeah. me what to eat and what not to eat, right? And I, yeah, and I, I, specific, coffee. <laughs> I specifically told you not to have coffee. And I told you to bring like a chocolate bar for your yeah, snack I brought a in, Snickers. Order to, <laughs> yeah, in order to boost your sugar level up. So yeah, you definitely, I mean, it was really an amazing experience. Like, uh, and again, the Zoom calls I offer to every single student who enrolls in my course, both FE Electrical and PE Power. As soon as you enroll, I got on a quick Zoom call with you and, uh, you know, plan out. And generally speaking, it's like, most of the times it's like students aiming for three month prep time, four months, prep time, five to six months. That's the general case. What got me very interested in your particular case was that you were adamant that you wanted to get it done, done within within a month. And I'm like, okay, let's make it happen. I've had students <laughs> like that before. Yeah, you were really telling me, you were like, yeah. I don't want to discourage you, but like, you might want to, at this point where you were seeing my test scores where you're like, oh, you might want to push it out a little bit more. But I, I like was listening and I'm like, no, nah, we're going for it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So that was that that was very interesting. Now tell me about this. I, I could tell right away that you were a good exam taker, right? Uh, because uh, on the mini exams, because when we reviewed the mini exams and the computer simulated practice exam that I have within my course, I could see that you were not spending like 12, 15 minutes on any given question. E even if a question was difficult, you were moving on. And those timestamps were really helping us uh, figure out what were the problem areas and what were not the problem areas. So one of the areas that students find challenging, the last 20% that you were you had left. So you reached 80% and then you were probably thinking that, you know what, that's good enough. But I told you that, you know, the demons lie in the computer sections and your background yeah. is not in computer sections. So tell me a little bit about how you dealt with the computer section, specifically computer networks, uh, to an extent digital systems, computer systems and software. Um, as far as the software, I remember when we spoke on the one of the last Zoom calls, you told me that I needed to go back and specifically look at that section. So I went back and watched because your performance was not that great. And it, I mean, going from zero to fifty is not that difficult, right? Mm -hmm. But going from seventy-five to hundred is really difficult. So I wanted yeah. to make sure that you at least get something out of it, right? And I mm -hmm. think you probably did decent enough, uh, obviously, because you passed the exam. So. How, how yeah, did you no. approach the sections? Well, for that part, like I, ha I had to go back and like review, especially like the sorting algorithms. I had to, I worked those questions like in detail and like I actually did by hand on paper, like the, the integer values, like how it changes and how you switch numbers for bubble sort and for merge sort. And that really helped me get a better understanding on that part. So you and don't then, have a strong background in software. Right? I don't at all. No, I don't. Did you I take any courses? Know. I didn't know anything about sorting. Like okay. they didn't teach so you didn't us take any about sorting. No, I've, I've only had like digital systems. That's probably the only course I've taken. So, so, computer so computer networks you learned from scratch from the course. Computer mm -hmm. systems you learned from scratch from the course, and software you pretty much learned from scratch. Yeah, right? pretty much. <laughs> like I have, I have had background in like HTML, JavaScript, and CSS, but that was in high school. So I really haven't done touched any of that stuff since I started electrical engineering at UCF. Right. Um, and I know, yeah, I remembered that your digital systems wasn't that bad. You you were doing decent digital systems. Yeah, but, I just uh, don't understand Boolean algebra, but I understand like the logic gates and like right. that. I can follow the logic there. It's really right. like breaking down those those algebra like concepts that I really had to like go over in detail. And you sort of told me to do all that because when you saw how I was in the computer section, you even gave me like an outline of which ones to touch on. So that really helped me before I went into the test. Yeah. So when you do the computer simulated practice exam in my course, I'm able to see, you know, which areas that you're deficient on. And then during the Zoom call, we can review it. But kudos to you, because I noticed that students, when they reach that 80, 90 percent course completion, they slow down a little bit. And some students outright ask me, hey, Wasim, do I really need to do this? I tell them that if you don't have a background in computer networks, computer systems, computer uh, in software, you actually have to, it's, it's a must for you, right? Mm -hmm. Because uh, you'd really need to patch up those weak areas. And uh, you can probably mention, uh, you know, explain this a little bit more, how, how, how those content help you. But I, within the computer networks, I think that last time I counted, I have about 20 plus lectures, okay? All those just four questions. And then that many quizzes and then many exams and then computer systems as well, tons and tons of content and software, tons and tons of content. So if you're enrolled in the course 
And if you have access to the resources, then there's no reason why you should leaving it on the table. You should be leaving it on the table. You should utilize it. Uh, then you will not have that fear as well, right? So th that, that is very important. In terms of your time management, Justin, so as I commented earlier, like your time management from the get-go was really good. And I, 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 I mean, credit goes to you. Uh, it, it, I've had some students who were over-prepared, I would say, um, even quite recently, but they know that how to solve the, uh, the question or, you know, uh, work on the problem or attack the different issues, but managing time and keeping your composure, how, how do you do it? Um, well, <laughs> it's sort of like my personality. Like, I, I think I have a really good personality for just not being overly stressed out. Cause I've had my okay. friends say this in class also where they're like, why aren't you freaking out? Because like, there's a test or something tomorrow and I haven't prepared anything. And I just have a really <laughs> good stress tolerance. Like I'm okay. very, I can take on a lot of like a whole bunch of demands and responsibilities and just kind of maintain cool through it. I don't really what know. What goes on in your mind? That. What goes in your mind? Um, what goes on in my mind is like, let's say I let's say there are four questions straight in series that you're not able to solve. You know that they're out of your league. What's what's that internal uh, thought process? Um, the internal thought thought process I go to is like, okay, if I'm not understanding these problems, I'll go back to the modules and I'll rewatch. You know, the modules maybe again on like 1.5 times speed since I've already watched them once. Okay. And then sort of looking from that, I'll go back into working the questions. If I still have problems with them, You're gonna then ask I'll me. try to look at the solutions and see if I can pick apart how they're doing in the solutions right. and then try the problem again. And right. that's just, I, I usually get it at that point. So so, so that, that's during your exam preparation mode. Let's say you get four straight questions on the exam and you're not able to make sense out of them. How do you keep yourself composed? Oh, if in that case, what happens is I have four straight questions. I don't know the, the answers. I flag them all and I continue moving through the course because I know I'm going to run into a, a question that I'm going to know the answer to. And then I'm going to do that question and I keep okay. moving on. And then eventually for me, it just kind of comes like because I'm, I'm looking through the booklet. I'm looking for answers to the other questions. And then eventually something will just dawn on me that like that previous question, there was something I didn't understand. But now it's like, oh, I remember this concept or I remember something and then I'm able to find it in the booklet and then I'm able to go back to the question and it's sort of like I pre-solve the question by yeah. doing other problems and I come back to that one and then now all of a sudden I, I know the answer I know how to approach it at least. That's that's exactly what I recommend my students but unfortunately mm -hmm. it's it's much more difficult to do in practice than it is uh, you know, <laughs> you can't freak theory. out. <laughs> what happens is that you get four straight questions, which are difficult. Your confidence level starts, generally speaking, for average students, it starts spiraling downwards. So what happens is that even the question that they know that they can solve, they start freaking out on that. So it does collateral damage, right? So yeah. what you're able to achieve, I mean, it's a gift and great quality that you all that you have. Uh, so those of you who have uh, exam anxieties. This is exactly you need to how you need to approach. Compartmentalize it. You know, put those four questions in a box and forget about it, right? In Justin's case, he's able to continue his momentum, gain his confidence, and while he's solving the other problems, he was able to go back and sort out the other ones, which is great, right? And that was the first thing I I I, I think mentioning it th for the third time that you were a very smart exam taker, even. In practice exam number one, within the course, I think one section you didn't do so well on, but I could clearly tell your time management was really nice, right? So mm -hmm. that's uh, th that's a great uh, skill to have. So my well, last- happens to everybody. Like you have to, sometimes you look at a problem, you really don't know how to solve it now, but yeah. when you like get your mind off of it and like do other things, eventually it just kind of like comes to you later. It, I yeah. don't know, that worked for me. <laughs> So what's your recommendation for students who are thinking about taking the FE exam and maybe overthinking? Uh, what would you tell them? Uh, they're overthinking like in the exam itself? No, whether to get started with the FE exam. Oh, no, you started immediately. Like start it as soon as you can. Like honestly, me, I'm in my senior year. Um, yeah. I think by this point, you've kind of done everything you need to be able to pass the FE uh, taking this review course was definitely like a must though. Like the, having the modules and the, 
the structure really helped to expedite the process because me studying on my own, it would have been a little bit more difficult. I wouldn't have had like, I would have kind of been bouncing back and forth, not knowing where my strengths were, my weaknesses were. The modules sort of like helped me refresh on everything. And then the tests also helped me pinpoint my weak areas that I could focus on those before the test. So if I would tell them that after you've taken all of the core courses, which is what I've done, I've taken all of my cores, all I have left are electives. Mm -hmm. At that point, you should really like start hunkering down, get into a course that you can just review everything and go ahead and take the exam because that's the best way to do it. You're going to be the most fresh. You're going to have all the things in your in your mind. If you wait until after school is over, you risk, you know, getting into the workforce and things happening, life happening, and you just forget all of these things and they're not going to be as fresh. It's yeah. going to be easiest to do it right away. And yeah. what was the best thing that you liked about the course? Uh, the best thing I liked about the course was that you broke everything down so well and it was very easy to follow. Plus, I've already done a lot of it before it was just sort of like a lot of refresher and then you we would even like prompt us at, at certain questions to pause the video and solve it that way i would have an idea of how the problem should be approached at least even if i didn't know the answer i could then go back to your video start it up and then watch you do it step by step and right. i would understand it at that point did you find it a good balance between theory and practice was it more theoretical more practice or you got uh, you got got to do a bit of both um, I like the theory aspects because they're definitely necessary to understand a lot of the problems. Um, sometimes I felt like it would have been better to just do more problems, but then you, you even have like, I feel like you're working on that already because with Bayes theorem, it was, I had thought that when I first went through, I was like, I wish there was more questions on Bayes theorem because I didn't really get it like right away. Cause that's a difficult concept to get. Yeah. And then after going through once, and then I took the, the test and obviously I didn't know Bayes theorem. Um, you were like, oh, go back. And I've already put a module there because I guess you were working on more questions for that. And yeah. then I was able to get some more stuff. So honestly, I feel like the balance between theory and questions is almost spot on. Uh, so thanks for that feedback, Justin. So mm -hmm. now you're going to be entering the workforce with your EIT certificate. How does that feel? Oh, that's really, really cool. Um, to be honest, though, I'm already planning for the PE. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, it's very cool. But uh, yeah, I was like, that's that's going to set me apart from my peers, especially just because I don't feel like anybody's talking about it. And if they are talking about it, it's something they're kind of like pushing off until the very end. Uh, it's easy to procrastinate on stuff like that. But um, I, I know that I want to take the PE and I have to have five references and I need my degree first. So what I'm going to do from now until I graduate is probably like continuing to kind of review the, the manuals and things like that. I'm probably going to order some materials from the, for the PE exam. Mm -hmm. And then um, probably talking, because I know you have to have like, like workforce experience. So you're, you're in Florida, right? So Florida I'm in Florida, has but I'm, I'm planning to move to Seattle. So I'm not sure how the PE works in yeah, Seattle. So so if, uh, if uh, I mean, uh, I don't remember exactly what the uh, rules around uh, for Seattle are, but uh, Florida has decoupled the exam experience requirements, right? So mm -hmm. theoretically, um, once you graduate, you can actually, you have passed that P exam, you can take the P exam right after, right? And I would love to help you with your P power exam preparation as well. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot for your time, Justin. Uh, really appreciate it. And again, uh, many congratulations for all the hard work and, you know, the result that you eventually obtained. Um, and I, I hope uh, the other stu students and the other viewers who are watching this were able to extract some advice and some motivation um, to help them get going with their exam preparation. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day.